putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Normally, we have a much more cheery day. (laughs) Oh, man. Let me just tell you, don't take all this stuff too hard, too much to heart. It's the world we live in. And it can be a cruel world, but we never know what the lessons are that we're being taught, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, you know, and it, it, what looks like a tragedy, and, and, and it is a tragedy, and I'm talking about the shooting in Florida, uh, the school shooting. There's more that comes out of this stuff. You don't know where these lessons are going to come from. So, you know, don't look at it through the prism of just the tragic part of it. We've already highlighted a hero, Aaron Feist, the coach who gave his life to save his students. What's going to be the impact? What's going to be the long range of that? Probably quite a bit of good stuff. I mean, you think about the the notion of somebody doing that for you. That's pretty, pretty powerful stuff. That's the, the love of a parent to a child. And here's a guy. These weren't his kids. You know, I mean, biologically speaking, he said, I don't think so. <laughs> so here, here he is saying, parents, you entrusted me with your kids. I'll give my life for them. What about the parents? What are they going to be thinking about that man? How long will it last? I don't know. I don't even really care. Because as I say to you guys all the time, I'm not that concerned about a legacy, give or take. I mean, we, we want to leave something behind. But if that's your focus, you know, find something better to do. But this coach is going to be in memory for quite some time of people that he saved and the people that watched it happen and those that remember him. And he probably had a pretty, you know, he had already made an impact on these kids. If he's willing to give his life more, my venture is he's probably done a lot more leading up to that. So that's a good thing. We never know what's going to come out. Anyway, I want to shift gears. I want to talk about a few things that we'll never get to if I don't talk about them like this lion uh, this uh, poacher that got killed by lions. Did you guys see this story? Here it is. Here's a quick little sy- synopsis. It says a big cat poacher has been killed and eaten by the pride of lions he was hunting at a private game reserve in South Africa. The hunter was heard screaming for help as he was attacked at the Igualala Private Nature Reserve in Hutzpruit outside of Falaboro, South Africa. It says, but the lions quickly killed their victim and devoured most of his body before being chased off. They left his head untouched. <laughs> I mean, that's gangsta lion killing right there, baby. They they didn't like eat all the evidence where you go. I wonder what what, what was it? Where did he go? Anybody seen, you know, Umburu? No, they left his head almost like a like a jihadist. <laughs> It's opposite of jihad is right. They they left this dude's head as if to say, yeah, mess with us. And this is what you get, baby. I just found that so peculiar. I wonder if they'd been left alone. Would they have eaten the head? I don't know because they got chased off supposedly. Now, I don't want this. These lines touched. I don't want them killed or anything. I think if you're out there trying to kill lines and poaching them and they come up on you and tap you on the shoulder and go, Bad day for you, brother, and eat you. Good for them. You want to go out there and admire them, get in your Jeep and drive along and go, hey, Mr. Lion, Miss Lion and the Pride, hey, kiddos, whatever, and you keep on cruising, you know, and you get eaten in, I'd be mad at the lions, even though I will say you are in their neighborhood, (laughs) you know, and they can be territorial. (laughs) They don't know if you're going to do a drive by. And having been in one of those types of environments, I will tell you it's harrowing, but it's you feel alive. (laughs) Yeah. And they weren't hunting lions. Thankfully, they were hunting Cape Buffalo when I was there and it was in Kenya. So anyway, I don't feel sorry for this guy. I I would like to. I would like to. There's a part of me. There's part of me that believes I'm supposed to. Let me ask you, you guys, do you feel sorry for a guy who sneaks into a private nature reserve to go poach lions. And why is he poaching them? Because they get hundreds of dollars per tooth. They get money for the paws. They get money for the manes. They get money for, there, there's all these supposed, it's not like tiger penis or whatever with the aphrodisiacs, but they do get all kinds of dollars for every piece of this lion. That's what I've heard. The skin, all of it. And so 
Do you feel sorry for a guy that's going to, I, I get it. He, one lion might be in a year's worth of work for him or whatever. I don't know. Go get a legitimate job, man. This is God's creatures out here and we need to leave them alone and let them do what they do. I, I don't, do I feel that way for what? Guinea, Guinea fowl? No, there's plenty of them. They're going to breed and all that, but we're talking about majestic animals that roam the, the plains and just minding their business and, and, you know, hopefully we, you know, we don't encroach on them so much that they're extinct. But I heard there's only 20,000 lions left in the wild. We've almost gotten rid of a lot of stuff. And look, I'm not one of these guys that I'm a guy that says, you know, you're, you'll survive, you know, and, and you got to deal with man. But there are certain animals like these, the great apes, the gorillas, the mountain gorillas. Leave them alone. Leave the tigers alone. You know, leave, some of these animals need to do what they do. Anyway, that was one thing I was thinking about. I then I saw this story. This this is one that I really find interesting. Food stamp for one grocery chain alone, eight hundred and eighty five point six million dollars worth of junk food purchased by food stamp certificate uh, food stamp recipients. So here's the rank, the item, and the sales. Number one. Well, let me, here's what I'll do. Let me give you the items and then you tell me if you can pick out which number one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So here we go. We got chips. We got candy. We got soda, ice cream, cookies, and cake. So I'm going to repeat that. We got chips, soda, candy, ice cream, cookies, and cakes. Now there's a whole bunch, but just out of that, what do you think is number one? What do you think is number one? You th- you say chips? I, why would I give you number one of chips if if I said it first? I'm just giving you some logic in case you want to change your mind. Yeah, candy. You say candy. Okay. What about soda? <laughs> All right. So here's the numbers. My producers, you're wrong. By the way, you guys are wrong. Okay. Number one, soda. Three hundred and fifty-eight million dollars in soda. Three hundred and fifty-eight million. Chips, number two, $199 million. Candy, number three, $96 million. Ice cream, oh, I'm sorry, candy's number 11. Ice cream's number 15, $86 million. Cookies, $78 million. Cakes, $68 million. That's a lot. That can't be right. Those numbers can't be it's, oh, let's see. Rank, item, and sales. So rank, yeah, that's the rank. Oh, I get it because they that what they did is they did the rank like number one is soda, and then number two might be say diapers. You got it. So anyway, one is soda, four is chips, eleven is candy, fifteen is ice cream, seventeen is cookies, and twenty two is cakes. That total amount of junk food. $885.6 million purchased by food stamp recipients. So almost a billion dollars. If we round up, I know we're, you know, $14.4 million away, but that's still significant. Oh, 114.4 uh, billion. But that's a big number. You shouldn't be able to buy that with food stamps. And that's kind of the point of it. Would you have guessed that that's how much money we spend in food stamp purchases, I never would have guessed that in a million years that we would spend that kind of coin in food stamp purchases. I get, you know, you want to reward the kids with a cake or something every now and then. And maybe you want to do a birthday cake or something like that. Maybe you could do a little allowance for that. But geez, <coughs> excuse me, $886 million, $885.6. Here's another story we never got to. Judge who marries gays wins settlement. Gail Myrick, an evangelical Christian and former magistrate, was forced out when she refused to perform civil marriage ceremonies for same-sex couples due to her religious beliefs. She's been awarded $300,000 by North Carolina, the state, and a settlement agreement. $122,660 in back pay. Settlement comes a year after an administrative law judge ruled that the state violated civil rights laws by forcing Myrick to resign as a Union County magistrate in October of 2014, soon after gay marriage was legalized. She's 68 years old. She's, it said, this case is about protecting the dignity of everyone in our diverse society. 
Faith and sexual orientation are deeply important to the identity of many people, and these two things don't have to be at odds with each other. The state of North Carolina should not have discriminated against Gail Meyer for her sincerely held religious beliefs about marriage. This is what the Heritage Foundation uh, is saying. I completely agree. Look, I again, if they change the law, they you get hired and they say, here's the law. How do you feel about it? Oh, this is exactly the way I feel. Then they change it and they go, now you have to adjust. And you go, no, I don't. You want me to adjust what I feel? No, I'm not going to do it. Anyway, I got to leave it there, guys. He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.